Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing this fine day? This will be my section to the collaboration video on Killer Kill 360's channel with both of us being in My Hero Academia. Now, if you want to see his video, I'll put the link into the description down below for everyone to see if you wish to see it. Now, without any further ado, let's get on into the story. So, as the story will begin, my character in the narrative, her name will be Misaki Urahana. Just to keep it simple for y'all. So, she is born as a child of infamous criminals. As they give Misaki to a close friend of theirs. Because they don't want their child to be involved in their crime drama. Wanting Misaki to live a crime free life. As you know, they agree to take Misaki and move to a different city of Japan. Starting a new life. New setting. All for Misaki's sake. So, we are going to jump cut three years. Mizaki is currently in her home, as happy as any child would be, as today is her fourth birthday. Celebrating it with friends and family alike. With Koski and Izuku's parents being very welcoming to them. And it didn't take long for Mizaki, Izuku, and Koski to be great friends, even sharing common interests as for their love for heroes and All Might and their desire to be heroes themselves. So a week would pass, Mizaki's quirk would manifest itself. She is ecstatic, you know, excited. She goes to show her mother, who is currently cleaning up as Mizaki runs into the kitchen, showing her mother her quirk. Her mother, you know, smiling. She's happy to see Mizaki just jumping up and down as if she just got an autograph from All Might himself. So her mother took Mizaki to the cork doctor. And after a few tests, the doctor would explain to Mizaki and her mom that her cork is metal based. Especially silver metal. That seemingly... Fits perfectly with Mizaki's silverish white hair. The doctor would explain with more detail that Mizaki's quirk allows her the ability to generate silver metal versions of words she says. And after hearing what the doctor said, Mizaki was so happy. It felt like it was the best day in the world. Even better than her own birthday and she couldn't wait to tell Koski and Izuku the great news. So after a few hours of just more testing, Mizaki and her mom finally leave the doctor's office as her mother took Mizaki to the playground to help her daughter mellow out all the hyperness. And so when Mizaki, Izuku, and Koski see each other, and they run towards each other, happy to see each other, as Koski asks as Mizaki if her quirk manifested. She nods as she says the word toy, and the word toy appears in the air before morphing into a silver toy, shocking both Koski and Izuku as she tells them that her quirk is called Silver Tongue which allows her the ability to generate silver metal versions of words she says. Koski, he's impressed, as he as well hath manifested his quirk, as he makes little sparks of very minor explosions, shocking Mizaki and Izuku, as he tells both of them that his quirk is explosions. As they both look at Izuku, wondering what quirk did he get. 
as Azuku, he is quiet as he didn't exactly want to tell them that he was corkless. And so he lies and says his hasn't manifested yet. As Koski and Mizaki, they were they were fine with that. They were willing to wait as they were aware of the fact that quirks needed time to manifest, whether it happened early or later than usual. But after they had their fun, they all would head home. As it's been a few weeks since the playground, as Izuku's quirk has not manifested, which led to kids accusing Izuku of lying and that he's actually quirkless. But Mizaki and Koski had had Izuku's back, saying that quirks tend to delay when they are really powerful. And it just needs time to adjust to Izuku's small body. And while most backed off, some did still think Izuku was quirkless, but they just had to wait it up. So, later that day, as Mizaki's mom asked her to take out the uh, trash and put it in the dumpster. Mizaki, she tried to pick it up, but the trash can... She tried to lift it up, but it was like too big. Her mom tried to help her, but she wanted to do it herself. And so she would use her cork, say the word scooper, as the word scooper would appear in the air before morphing into a silver scooper. As she would use it to pick it up and take it outside, to which she would chuck it into the uh, dumpster. And so. As she's proud of herself for being able to think on the fly like that, she does hear someone crying. As she's looking around trying to see who is crying, she sees Izuku sitting on the steps crying. As Mizaki, she goes over to Izuku and asks him, why is he crying? As Izuku, he tried to come up with an excuse, but he knew he couldn't. So, he just had to come clean and tells her that he's quirkless. As Mizaki, she didn't really know what to say because she wasn't really expecting him to say that. So she just sits down next to him and, you know, asks him how long he's been quirkless. As he says, since they were at the playground. And of course, you know, he does say sorry for lying. And asks her if this changes anything but uh, twenty down. But she just shakes her head no. Cork or no cork, you will always be my friend. So they hug it out. He says thank you. As he asks her, can I still be a hero without a cork? And so she just says, yeah, of course. The hero makes the cork, not the other way around. If there's anyone who deserves to be a hero, it's you. And when she says this, Izuku, he's crying, but not tears of sadness, but tears of joy. This is what he wanted to hear. Despite being quirkless, he can still be a hero. So, of course, after a while, they parents do call each other. As she tells Izuku, you know, she has to, like, leave. So, you know, they hug each other as they would head back home. And so it's been a few years since that last encounter and Izuku and Koski and Mizaki are seven years old. And Izuku, thanks to Mizaki, encourages him to still aim to be a hero and get into UA. But this just led to him being, you know, constantly bullied and harassed by his classmates especially by their friend Koski and while Izuku and Misaki's relationship would you know naturally get better Izuku and Koski's relationship would get worse as he didn't believe it was possible for someone who didn't have a cork to ever become a hero but 
despite this, Izuku still considered him and Koski friends, even though Mizaki has been trying her best to show him that he is not that. But, however, things escalated when Izuku tried to help Koski after he fell off a bridge into a stream. Izuku offered a helping hand, but Bakugo's pride caused him to take this as an insult. He believed that Izuku made him appear as if he needed help from someone who was beneath him. As he just shows Izuku in the water, Mizaki sees this. She gets upset as she shoves Koski in the water, helping up Izuku, asking him, you know, what is he doing? Izuku was just trying to help you. you know, uh, Koski says he doesn't need saving from that quirkless nobody. Mizaki, she's kind of at the loss of words. She didn't know why Koski was acting like this. Her, Izuku, and Koski were great friends. Why would that change now over some quirk? It didn't really make sense to her. But it would only get worse as time progressed. As one day in school, during recess, Koski and his friends were bullying a kid. As Izuku jumps in, asking for them to leave him alone. But Koski tells Izuku to get out of the way. Or they'll just use him as a punching bag instead. Now, this does scare him, but he doesn't back down. Causing Koski to be annoyed, but in a way impressed at Izuku's willingness to help, even if it meant he'll get beat up in the process. So they rush towards him as Izuku you know, closes his eyes, expecting the worst, but it didn't happen. He opens his eyes to see Koski and his friends in a silver jail cell as he sees Mizaki standing there asking Izuku if he's alright. He nods, saying, you know, thank you. As they look at Koski and his friend, saying, you know, she essentially put them in timeout for right now, which did annoy them as they're trying to open it, but with little to no luck. So, Mizaki turns around, sees the bully kid on the ground crying, as her and Izuku would help him up and take him to the nurse's office. The nurses sees this and asks what happened as Mizaki explains Bakugo and his friends were bullying him, which didn't surprise the nurse as she was kind of annoyed. It's always Bakugo and every time he would get a slap on the wrist. So the nurse Tess says thank you for helping him and she'll take care of him and tells them to go back to recess. And after a while, the bullying got worse for Izuku, but with Mizaki on this side, it made the, the experience a little more bearable since she would always fight them back, which made the insults more frequent since, you know, same thing. It's like, oh, Izuku needs a girl to protect him. Oh, she has more backbone than you, but she didn't really care about what they were saying. Izuku was her friend, and she was going to help him out. Which, over time, made her develop a bit of a savior complex towards Izuku. As, with that last experience, we're going to do another time jump to seven years. As Mizaki, Izuku, and Koski are 14 years old. And they're attending class at the bullying has reached an all-time high and it was at its worst when it came to Mizaki and Koski. Their fights were always pretty brutal since they usually never held back which made it cool for everyone else watching but as time went on Mizaki's savior complex had increased drastically to the point to where she would follow Izuku everywhere he'll go. Which did make him feel a little bit uncomfortable. But he knew she was just trying to help him. 
but it started to become overbearing. He felt like as if he was a dog on a leash being piloted around by Mizaki. And when it came to the end of the school year, as the teacher announces that all the students will graduate this year, Koski, you know, replies that he's not like the other classmates, calling them all weak and that only he is destined to attend UA. And he alone will surpass All Might. Once his teacher announces that Izuku and Mizaki are also attempting to get into UA as well, Koski is pissed and furious at this. And of course, you know, he's mad at Izuku and uses the explosion cork to scare him, claiming that someone who was corkless can never get into UA and can't do anything at all. And, you know, Mizaki, she gets in Bakugo's face saying that it's the hero that makes the cork, not the other way around. And you're quite full of yourself to think that you'll ever be on All Might's level. So, this pisses him off. They're all up in each other's face, about to fight. As the teacher just straight up tells him to sit down. And he's like, he's not about to deal with this on the very last day of school. So, they stay quiet as they sit down. So, after class, Koski takes Izuku's hero notebook, burns it, and tosses it out the window. Koski again, telling Izuku that heroes have had stories about them since their early school years. That only he is destined to reach that life, and Izuku and Mizaki are just stepping stones for his greatness. And, well, if you know canon continuity, you know what Bakugo is going to say at this point. But, of course, Mizaki looks Bakugo dead in his face and dares him to say it. But, he doesn't say it because he knows. So, it's like an intense stare down as Bakugo is like, whatever. As he just leaves. As Hizuku sighs, thinking, what exactly is he going to do up to this point? As he grabs his backpack, as he just leaves without really saying anything. He sees the pond where his notebook is at. Picks it up, sees that it's pretty much ruined now. As Hizuku, he's just almost have a kind of like done with it look on his face. So, Mizaki, she's like, you know, I'm so sorry, you know, if you want, I can, as Izuku just shakes his head saying, like, no, you've done enough, Mizaki. As, uh, she's like, what do you mean? Like, is he just like, you know, I'm just done with it. I'm done with this. I'm done with Koski. I'm done with. This, I'm done with you. Keep following me around everywhere. Like, I can't do anything. And it's driving me nuts. And she knows she's also been on, on him a lot. But she tells him, like, I do this because, you know, I care. You know? And it's, it's just like, well, if you ask me, you constantly follow me around. It's worse than Bakugo's harassment. Because at least I can attempt to do that. But with you around, I can't do anything. And it's annoying. Izuku, they're kind of at a disbelief type moment. As the tension just rises. As Izuku just says, I'm going home. So, he just leaves. As... Mizaki, she's kind of just standing there and a bit of a disbelief at the same time she knows like she she knows she's not mad at Izuku she knows that she's kind of just been almost stalking him in, in a way always following him and when she really like thinks about it it does make her generally think that I just pretty much Pretty much gave him no agency at all. So she does feel 
upset with herself as she just heads the opposite direction to go home. And with this moment, the same thing would happen to Izuku to where, you know, he'll meet the sludge villain. And of course, All Might would come in, help him out. I don't think that part would really change as much. When everything up to that point pretty much stays the same. Even to the point to where, where Bakugo gets pretty much grabbed by the sludge villain. As Izuku is looking around trying to figure out what to do. As Mizaki, she sees Izuku running in that area to try to help Bakugo from the sludge villain. And she feels a bit kind of conflicted because in one way, she wants to just rush in and stop Izuku. But in another case, she knows she can't just keep jumping in, blocking Izuku from trying to be a hero. So she kind of just watches him to see what he can do without her constantly holding him back, essentially. And so, yeah, Izuku takes his backpack, throws it at the sludge villain, hitting him in the eye, as Izuku is just trying to rush in and grab Koski. As he does manage to grab his arm, but the sludge villain does, like, morph back, kind of raising Izuku and Koski in the air. And All Might, seeing this, gets expired by Izuku. Because even though he is quirkless, he's still trying. And that was more than enough to make All Might rush back into to the scene and do as he does in canon. And so, Mizaki sees uh, Izuku, rushes in, hugging him, worried about him. As uh, Bako, he's dusting himself off, like, uh, as he just, like, walks away without even saying anything. Not even a thank you. He, he, he just leaves. Which, Mizaki doesn't care. She's not really worried about Bako, though. She's more worried about Izuku. She just tells Izuku, like, can I talk to you? So, he nods. They sit down, and they're talking. As she essentially says, you know, I saw what you did back there. And, uh, to be honest, I'm I- impressed. As it was, like, impressed. What do you mean? Well, you did what not even most heroes in that situation was doing. When they saw their quirks couldn't fit the scenario, they kind of just paused. Not really sure what to do. But you jumped in regardless. Look, I'm sorry for just essentially being your personal hall monitor. Constantly following you around. Pretty much not allowing you to do what you always wanted to do. And for that, I am sorry. So, Izuku, even though he is annoyed from her constantly doing that. He doesn't hate her because he knows that without her doing it, could he really have handled the level of harassment? And so, Izuku, you know, he accepts her apology. They hug it out as she essentially says, um, I'll be uh, training to go to UA. Do you, um want to train with me so izuku he nods and she's like great great um whenever time is good i'm always available as she walks away and heads home and as that is happening as she leaves of course izuku is walking as in that moment where all might appears again As, of course, that moment in my head will still stay the same, but just happen in a slightly different way. Because in this moment, Izuku doesn't have to be told that he can be a hero. Because Mizaki already told him he can be a hero. 
the biggest thing about Izuku in this part is not that he couldn't be a hero. It's the fact that he didn't really see it in himself. People were to constantly tell him. His mom was telling him. Izaki's mom was telling him. Bakugo's mom was telling him. But sure, everyone else was telling him, but he didn't see it. Sure, he wanted to be one, but he was he had to be realistic w w with himself. Could a corkless person really be a hero? Could he be? Does he really want to worry the people that he loves constantly every single time he jumps into a situation like that? And that was something he had to really think about. Sure, you want to be a hero, but you're constantly worrying everybody else every time you jump into the battlefield because you're pretty much defenseless. And so, with All Might and Mizaki on his side, he no longer has to keep asking himself that because now he generally knows. Because now, no one had to tell him that. He had to see it himself. Sure, people kept telling him he could be a hero, but he didn't see it. This scrawny kid, he didn't see it. And so, with All Might giving him one for all, he actually sees it now. He not only is being told that he can be a hero, but he actually sees it too. And so, when it came to the 10 months, Izuku and Mizaki still working on their relationship, but her working on her her distance with Izuku, knowing that she can't constantly be on him like that. But she does care. And so with that, she respects Izuku's decision to be a hero, or at least respect his drive regardless. And when it came to them working out together, she did notice that Izuku was developing muscle mass really fast. Like within the first three months, Izuku was already having a pretty lean physique. And as time would progress... And when it came to that, it didn't take long for Izuku to pretty much introduce Mizaki into All Might. And of course, she's aesthetic because of course she is. Why wouldn't they be? It's All Might. With the whole speaking of them talking to each other, Izuku, he can actually trust Mizaki with the knowledge of One for All. And when he tells her, she ain't had no... Sure, she was shocked, but... In a way, she is happy because she knows that Izuku, he's not only thinking the part, but he can actually be the part. And so when it came to that, the only thing that would be different now is that All Might, through recommendation, will allow Mizaki and Izuku to get in simply off of recommendation. And so... When they hear this, of course, they are shocked because, yeah, that's like the biggest clout in the world. You get recommended in the UA by All Might himself? Yeah, that's a flex. That's a flex. And so, yeah. They both are going to attend UA the next day. Mizaki... She will be going to 1B, and Izuku will be going into 1A. And of course, they're, you know, first day jitters in the most, pretty much the most popular school in Japan, let's be honest. And so, they gave each other one last hug, you know, saying that, you know, here's to our future. As they both head to their classes respectfully. And so... That is where I'm going to end it right there. Tell me what you think. Did you enjoy? And if you did, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Hey, vibes like this is all becoming. Hopefully, Kill a Kill 360 will be down for that collab when it happens. And until then, I'll see you next time. Peace.